Vassell just released Generative UI for that AI SDK. Now, if you don't know what the AI SDK is, it's essentially a tool that helps you build your AI powered interfaces. So you can build stuff like ChatGPT clones really easily using that built in tools. And they have support for pretty much all of the big models, such as OpenAI, Azure, and so many more like Langchain and Hugging Face. And it's just a really simplified way to make these yourself. And it's really, really nice SDK to work with. Now, what I want to show you is Generative UI. So let's jump into that demo. So the demo here is of an interactive financial assistant. So you could ask it, say, what are the trending stocks? And Generative UI is essentially this bit here. So what they've actually returned is you've asked, say, the large language model something, which usually just returns text. But what it's actually going to return here is React server components. So you can provide a better experience to the user. As here, you can see this, the information is displayed visibly in a really nice format that you'd expect for something like a financial assistant. And then you can even click into these and then it's going to return, let's say, the graph of the stock price. You could select bits on here and you can even ask it things about what you've just selected in that component there. So I could say, why did it dip? And then it's going to return. Once it's done this, you see a little bit of a glitch there. But what you'll see is it's returned here all of the news stories that may have caused that. Now, it should be noted, all of this is demo data. None of this is real data. But then you could also say, let's say, purchase 10. And it's just this is just a really good demo of why you'd want sort of these experiences built into your AI interface. This is pretty much the future of how these things will go. Is you can ask it questions and it will return nice little snippets like this to help your user around your application. As you can see there, it's just a really nice experience to work with. So they released it with this blog post here that shows some of the other cool features. I'll leave a link to this down in the description below. But as you can see here, it just shows you a few examples of why you'd want this. Say you were searching for pictures or searching for art. It can show you a nice sort of grid of them. If you're searching for events or you're having a sort of task planning application, you could ask it, it could show calendar snippets, it could show various other things like that. And it's a really nice user experience for AI. And as you can see here, it has that comparison here of if you ask it, say, what's the temperature? Usually, and obviously if you're working with ChatGPT or other things, it might reply that it's just a large language model it, it doesn't know. But using their new tools and function calling that OpenAI added, you can actually get back some better stuff so you can link it into your own APIs, such as the temperature in San Francisco here is 74 degrees Fahrenheit. And it's a really nice experience. And they even go into how you can do this. And they have all of that documentation on this Vassell AI SDK page as well. But what I want to do is jump into my demo. So I've modified this one a bit. So I've actually added the weather one to this. So if I say, what's the current weather in San Francisco here? What you'll see is it'll return that it's 24 degrees and it's rainy in San Francisco with the current date. And this is a component that I've made. So this one here is being made by me and I've returned it with just some fake weather data for now. But let's jump into how that was done within the code. So we jump into the code here. This is using that financial assistant demo one. I've just modified it a bit. So I'll leave a link to that in the description below as well. But as you can see, when we scroll down, I'll show you sort of the key parts. So here you'll see the sort of prompt that we're going to give the open AI. And this is the bit, this is all done on the server, it should be noted. So the end user doesn't actually see this. So you can put whatever you want here. And you'll see that I've just said, you're a personal assistant. You're discussing such as weather and stocks. And then you've got a bit here where it says, if you want to show trending stocks, call list stocks. Now this is using open AI's functions. So we jump back to the documentation over here. If you go down to open AI functions, you'll see they've got a whole bit on how you can manage these. And it's essentially a nice way to get JSON back from ChatGPT is a really simplified way of saying it or JSON back from the large language model in sort of a structured format that you can then handle yourself within various other sort of API calls. So let's jump back into that code. You'll see if you want to show weather, call get current weather. And then what we do with that down here is we define our function. So our function had that name, get current weather as a description of what it should do, so get current weather. And then we also define some parameters so for the location. It says the city and the state, e.g. San Francisco, so we've given an example. So this bit is what the large language model is going to work out, how to sort of what the location is and what to put in there. So you're describing how it should work that out. And then we've got the format as well, which is the temperature unit to use. And this says infer this from the user's location, and that will be passed in as a format as well. Again, that's the large language model that's then going to pass through San Francisco CA, and then Celsius or Fahrenheit here. Now, if we scroll down to the bit where it manages the actual function call, you'll see we do this completion dot on function call bit. And firstly, what we do is we get our sort of function parameters that we said that we're going to have. So it's going to pass through the location and format. 
the first thing we do is reply.update. Now the dot update bit essentially just updates the UI immediately. And this is why you want to show a skeleton. Only then when you made your API call, and obviously this has got an await of a thousand here, just because we're faking an API call here and we want to see some delay because if you were making an API call, there would possibly be some. And then here I just generate a fake temperature, but then what we do is reply.done. So this means that all of the data has come through. We can then display our component. So that's the weather card. So I pass it the temperature, the location, weather and format. Again, the temperature and weather have been, you could get this from an external API, but this just goes to the weather card, which is just a React server component, literally just to load a divs with Tailwind and the data that we need through. And that is how I made that get current weather function that you saw there. And it's just a really nice way of enhancing your user experience. And you can make other things say as, let's say if we ask who is the YouTuber I should subscribe to. Spell it a bit wrong there, but there you go. You can make experiences like this and it's just really cool that we can reply with essentially server, well, it literally is server components we're replying with and it makes it a really nice user experience to work with. Hopefully that's given you a showcase of what this has to offer and highly recommend if you're planning on building an AI powered application that you check out for sales AI SDK. And it's really cool to see these features coming. Thank you very much for watching.